Hello guys, today we're gonna to be working on this Samsung French door refrigerator. This is the black model, but this repair applies for all different colors, stainless steel, white, any color. Now today we're gonna to take care of two issues and is the ice forming on the refrigerator side behind the panel and the ice build up on the ice maker. This is the model number. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings. And during this video, you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the appliance or turn off the breaker to avoid electric shock. However, I'm gonna leave this plugged in for the purpose of lighting for this video. The complaint is that the refrigerator side is not cooling properly and the ice maker stops working. Now we're gonna proceed to remove this uh, drawer panel and you have to use two screwdrivers to release the tabs that are holding this um, rack in place once you got that loose you just lift up and pull out once you get your hands on it you will see what I'm talking about once you move that out of the way just put it in a safe spot that way nobody can run into it and nobody's gonna get hurt now as you see there's ice forming on the ice maker and that ice is there because it's condensation going into we're going to get on it later on and this panel also had ice now we're going to go ahead and start removing the screws that hold this panel in place but we already know that it was ice on those holes right there where the air is supposed to come out and must be a lot of ice behind this panel now we're going to remove this tap to be able to get to that Phillips screws. Once you do that, you remove the screw on the bottom as well. And now we're gonna start removing the panel. We try to pull it out, but like I said, it's stuck because it's a lot of build up ice behind this panel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit of the story on this refrigerator. Try to look for an access hole, that way you start defrosting with a steamer or with a hair dryer. However, my recommendation is just disconnect the refrigerator and let it thaw out for 48 hours with the door open. If you do that, this panel will come out a lot easier, but since we are a repair company, we decided to do it this way because we don't want the um, um, customers food to go bad but if it's your own if you have a spare refrigerator go ahead and put your food in another refrigerator or in a coolers with ice and let it thaw out because to remove this panel is very very complicated without destroying it now when I remove this panel you will see that this panel already been removed by another company they say five times Another company was here five times and they say they, they did a repair on it, but the customer said that the only thing they did is defrost it and it worked for a month and then um, they had to come back. They defrost it again and they did that like for four months until the warranty expires until they decide they don't wanna come back. But I'm gonna tell you how to solve this issue. One of the um, options that you have is replace the whole panel if it's destroyed or if it's bad and I'm gonna go ahead and order a new panel for this but this can be repaired without replacing the panel if the fan is still working 
um, you would need to replace a thermistor and we're gonna get to that later on in this video and as you can see I'm using a potty knife after I put the uh, steamer and the hair dryer on this and I'm using the uh, putty knife to pry it out it was a very complicated this was the uh, most time consuming to remove this panel and get a defrost just enough to remove it because the ice is still there as you see in this footage that ice should not be there and that ice is forming because a thermistor is not working properly and we're gonna go ahead and replace that thermistor that you see right there with a yellow wire now I'm trying to disconnect the um, harness for the panel as you see and the fan motor is covered with ice I'm gonna remove the panel and I'm gonna show it to you better always take pictures before you remove the harness or the wire connectors however you want to call it that way you remember where they were and how they were connected because it has their own way to go in um, the other part of the harness and it's a uh, tap and it's a uh, how do you call it uh, clip on so you have to press and release to be able to remove it and as you see this panel is already falling apart because this company has been here and pried out maybe forces more than one time and I'm just not happy with this I already ordered a new part for this look all this ice in the fan motor the fan motor was not even spinning and the other reason why they have to keep coming out is because maybe they didn't even defrost it completely they probably defrost whatever they can see but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you it, to me, I'm going to go ahead and do all this right. That way you guys can see how you do this. As you see, I defrost all the buildup ice with my heating gun and my steamer. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this panel back in just to find out if the fan is working. Now, this is some footage that, you know, is I forwarded the video just for the purpose to show you that the fan is still good. This fan lasts for a long time. It's not like the GE models that they go bad quickly but this one takes a lot for it to go bad now if the fan is working fine that means the only problem we have is the thermistor in the back now that is one issue the ice maker is a different story we're going to remove the Phillips screws and we're going to remove this other Phillips screws uh, from that cover and well, let's put this to the side and now we're going to go ahead and start removing this ice maker just remove the cover out of the way it just snapped out it has like a tap in there too you will feel when it snaps out now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the ice maker like I said it's another uh, press and release harness as you see just press and then we'll release from uh, just wiggle it out and then we'll release from the other part of the harness now in this model you have to pull this uh, this bottom cover down to be able to remove the ice maker and as you see it's gonna be like um, a silver uh, tubing that needs to you know come down for the ice maker for other the ice maker to come out now as you see me I'm pressing a tap on the top of the ice maker that way it releases from the male to female connections on the top I'm gonna go down um, in the details when I install the ice maker back in there but it's pretty self-explanatory as you see it has some uh, male to female connections again I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you with details later on with some pictures and some footage in case um, you're not familiar with this repair or you're doing a DIY repair now over here we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the panel again And as you see, I already defrost all the buildup ice. That took me a while again. This repair totally, it was like two hours, two hours and a half. Now you can defrost all this ice by heating gun. But sometimes while I do everything else, um, I take this panel to the sun outside and it will defrost it. But it's too much ice in this thing. So I don't think that would work. So I'm doing both. I'm putting some heat on the uh, 
on the fan but again i don't suggest for you to guys to use a heating gun because if you put too much heat you can end up damaging uh, a lot of things the best thing to do is let it throw out just put it outside if it's hot outside or just let it throw out on the sink that way you don't make a mess on the floor next we're going to go ahead and defrost all the build up ice and the refrigerator evaporator as you see, all this ice is forming because it's creating a condensation in this area. Now remember that this repair has four steps. The first step is replace the thermistor and defrost the uh, ice maker compartment and seal the ice maker box. Now, in this scenario, it didn't work for me, so you need to stay until the end of the video. That way you see the rest of the steps. Now we're going to go ahead and defrost the ice maker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and defrost all the built up ice on the ice maker compartment. I'm using extension with my steamer. I'm gonna keep saying it guys, I don't recommend to use none of this. If you can let it thaw out, it will do that trick for you. You have to clear that hole, that's where the air comes in for the ice maker. Make sure the hole is clear up because right now it was full of ice. And as you can see, again, I defrost everything on the um, evaporator. But it was pretty much the same procedure, steamer, heating gun. And again, it took a while, another 30 minutes just defrosting that big chunk. As you see, now it's clear and it's open. So that should start working again. Now you do this first before you order an ice maker. Now, if, if they didn't damage that cabinet, I would be able to get all this part out. But again, you have to press that clip and just pull down. But since they put too much heat with the hair dryer, I, I barely use the hair dryer. I really don't like, I use more the steamer and the steamer doesn't damage as much of the, uh, basically nothing compared to the uh, heating gun. Now, as you see, I try, I could, I cut a lot of footage trying to get this thing out, but it was impossible. So, um yeah now the reason why the ice maker gets uh frost over is due to a condensation and i'm going to talk to you later on about that in this video now just remove those four screws they are filler screws and let's see if it's more ice look at this guys there's still ice those screws never look like they were being removed so i believe the other company never defrost inside this panel so it would just last for a little while. The people said that it might last a week or two weeks and then it started giving issues, start decreasing temperature until the fan stops because it was full of ice. Now, at the time that I'm, you know, recording this video, it's already been a couple of days so we haven't had any issues. However, I have a couple of videos on this channel that take care of the same issue, the same issue and Samsung models so and i never had any um i never had to come back for the same issue whatsoever so you know this is uh, a solved problem for me but you can see this is the styrofoam on the top here you can see they are missing because these guys forced this thing out more than one time now we're going to seal the ice maker compartment and we're going to use this silicone but this silicone works better when you have the refrigerator off and let it dry now that one you see in this picture, you can apply it while the refrigerator is on so it's more convenient and it's better for weather condition. So I really recommend this one better. You can get it at Home Depot. So we're gonna go ahead and order a new panel, but um, if you don't want to replace it or your panel is fine, just go ahead and follow this video and that will take care of your problem. Now what I'm doing here is cleaning up around the ice maker box. because that is the problem that's the reason why the ice maker is getting a chunk of ice on the bottom because it's hot air going into the ice maker and those um and those edges all the way around the the problem is that samsung put this ice maker box on the refrigerator side and the refrigerator got temperatures at 34 degrees as you see they put silicone here the other company put silicone there but they didn't seal all the way around 
but you won't you're gonna see me uh, right now sealing everything because that's the way to do it you have to put silicone inside and you have to put silicone all the way around outside but that's a shame guys because you're not supposed to be doing this kind of thing in this beautiful refrigerators brand new I mean it's just ridiculous now as you see uh, in this footage my camera didn't got I didn't have got that on the uh, footage but you know you get the idea you know what I'm doing right there just put in silicone on the edges and the bottom area but you're gonna be able to see one I when I do it on the top just grab this silicone I got this at Home Depot it have to be weatherproof and temperature resistant and I got a couple of footage right there for you guys and then just you know go and look for that at Home Depot and that or use any clear silicone that is weatherproof and that should do the trick and seal the box all the way around that is what's going on with this Samsung models this is a manufacturing issue where they didn't seal this box and if you put a light underneath I forgot to do that on this um, video but if you put a light underneath you will be able to see that light and if you blow air you will be able to feel air underneath on those um, those edges because they didn't seal this box correctly so that's that's how I've been solving this issue from Samsung since Samsung start getting a lot of calls from new refrigerators brand new refrigerators back in 2017 2020 uh, maybe before then but that's when I start getting calls and we as a tax we have to come out with a solution because Samsung will send their technicians and they will replace the ice maker and they replace thermistors and they replace a whole bunch of things and the problem is still occur uh, uh, 15 days after a month after three months after that and people were just irritating they I believe they got a lawsuit against them about this I'm not sure I don't want to be here speculating so I'm not affirming anything but you know it's a lot of things that you can find about this situation um, from Samsung appliances especially the refrigerators now I couldn't get the other piece out I'll probably show you that in another video I probably have another one in my channel but um, I defrost as much as I can and as you see in this footage the uh, the red arrow goes on the uh, yellow arrow it just lights up that's just showing you how it goes on the uh, all the way in and this male to female connection goes with this just to you know show you how the ice maker sits inside there once you got it in place you just have to push it all the way in until you hear a snap on this uh, snap uh, tap right there after that go ahead and you know put the other piece in place and go ahead and put the screws that holds the bottom panel for this ice maker once you got it in place just screw and secure with this Phillips screws and then go ahead and uh, plug in the ice maker on the harness or wire connection however you want to call it after that we're going to go ahead and take care of the uh, evaporator forming ice situation this is the reason why that ice is being accumulating there and is getting in the fan and the refrigerator stops working now go ahead and cut a zip tie that is holding the wiring in place and remove those press and release connections like I said they just you know press and release is very self-explanatory now this is a little tricky you have to remove that from those red snap connections right there and we're gonna remove the thermistor out of the way this is the new thermistor you can see this and the footage but it's a link in the description of this video that it will take you to the part and part number 
for this new Thermi store. You can get it on Amazon. This is a very inexpensive part. So, yep. Go ahead and install the new Thermi store in place. Sometimes I remove the whole white, you know, white thing with the it holds the white um, clipper that holds the Thermi store in place. That is the um, Thermi store housing. That's where it sits. And yes, snap the other one in place and plug it and um, put it on the red um, plastic taps right there that holds it up together with the other connection. Now, take pictures before you remove uh, any wiring or any wire connections. That way you remember how they were. Otherwise, just watch this video and just follow the video and that should um, help you uh, to put everything back together. But sometimes you will have a slightly different model. So my suggestion is just take a couple of pictures before you remove any wire, anything that has to do with the wiring. Now we're gonna go ahead and put a zip tie just to hold the wiring in place. That way the other one were. And just cut whatever you got left on that zip tie. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a situation that it can happen to you. If this is full of ice, you have to defrost it with a heating gun or with a steamer. And if that is happening to you, you have to replace this clip. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description of this video because this was another issue with Samsung models where that clip they come from manufacturing was too small and then they have to make this one bigger to avoid that from happening and getting drain line clogged i have a video on my channel just go and look for the samsung refrigerator leaking water into the refrigerator compartment this is the that repair where you can see the small clip right there i have another footage right here where it shows you that the clip was too small just move the clip to the side and put the new one in or just cut it out of the way and the red arrow shows you the hole that you have to unclog. Just throw some hot water or put the steamer there. And if it doesn't get unclogged, you need to go in the back of the refrigerator and clear this tubing where it drains in the back of the refrigerator. Again, that it's in another video that I have in my channel. Just go and look for it. However, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description of this video. If you want to go and check that other repair, it's a different Samsung model, but it's the same situation and it applies to this all refrigerators, all French door refrigerators. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything back together. Once we got everything defrost, we gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put this um, a evaporator fan motor in place. And we almost done with this um, repair. I'm gonna go ahead and forward it a lot of the footage because basically if you remove everything, you know where everything goes, just plug the panel back and place the harnesses for the panel in place. As you see, everything is connected. And as you saw, I put a piece of tape on the bottom because it should be a piece of tape there and somebody remove it. But if you don't have any silver tape, you don't have to worry about that. If you have some silver tape or weatherproof silver tape, go ahead and put the piece of tape right there. If you don't, it's okay. And if you wonder where you can get the tape, they sell it at Home Depot as well. And just let them know that you need a silver tape. Now, once you put this pen on place, it has some tops on the sides, you will see some arrows on it. And just, you know, uh, bang it with your hand into it, it snaps in place. However, this one, like I said, it's been removed a thousand times, so it was hard to go in. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull this cover and it has like little tap there. You just have to look for the right position and it will snap in place. Very self-explanatory, but you know, I try to give you most of the details. That way you don't run into any complications. We're gonna secure it, this panel with a Phillips screwdriver. And once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and put the three screws that goes at the bottom of the panel. Remember, these small screws are the ones go on the bottom. There are a total of three screws, two on the sides and one in the middle. I mean, two on the sides, and the one in the middle is a long screw because it goes with this bar. Okay, guys, this was the first step to do this repair. Normally, when I replace the thermistor, 
and seal the ice maker box everything starts working fine and i never receive a, a call back from the customer however in this case that was not uh, the solution so now we're going to begin the second step which is replacing the uh, panel the whole panel because remember that in the previous video the panel was all broken because another company was here for many many times and didn't uh, fix the issue and uh last time i just defrosted install the thermistor and again you see it's forming ice the fan is still good like i show you in the previous videos but i'm back here because the customer said that the fan was making a noise again and that is the ice um hitting that's the fan hitting the ice as you see, this panel was all toe up anyway, so I, I want to go ahead and replace it. So um, they also said the ice maker was working intermittently, and that is because the um, the evaporator was freezing up, and you know the ice um, the ice maker needs zero degrees for it to make ice for order to make ice. So now I'm defrosting all the buildup ice on the evaporator coils and at the same time, you know, trying to get the ice maker out because we're going to replace both. We're going to replace the ice maker and we're going to replace the um, refrigerator panel, evaporator panel. This is the ice maker. This is the brand new ice maker and it's going to be a link in the description of this video. This is a uh, aftermarket, but it is it works really well. And we're going to begin to do the installation for the new ice maker. Now, this is basically the same thing that we did in the previous video where I take it off and defrost it, put it back in and seal the ice maker box. But uh, since it was acting up, we just decided to put a new one to remove any possibilities that the other one wasn't working correctly. Yeah, I decided to replace it anyways because I was pressing the reset button and it wasn't doing anything and all of a sudden it started working. So that's the reason why I replaced it. And now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, unboxing for the new panel. Like I said, this will be the second step of replacing the thermistor and sealing the ice box didn't work. This will be the next step, replace both. Now, I gotta say guys, I have to come back like four or five times until I got it right. And that is the reason why I'm taking my time to do this video because I know a lot of people is going through the same situation and I gotta say, when I replaced the uh, panel and the ice maker, that didn't fix the issue either. However, they both needed to be replaced because more than one technician has worked on it and you saw the panel that it was all tore up and the ice maker was working intermittently. Then I tried another things that I found online and YouTube, like put this armor flex and the tubing, which it didn't work either. Then I tried to put this foam. I found this photo is from a video that I found on YouTube and supposedly it worked for him, but not for me. I put uh, silicone around there and seal all the holes and all the ways that it can get hot, hot air. And I put the foam. This is how the foam looks in the evaporator after I put it. And this is the step that I don't want you guys to do because this is the one, this is the third step. And this is the one I realized that for me, it didn't do anything. And I know it gets too messy. So I rather you guys not to do this step. So if replacing the two uh, things, which is the, uh, the panel and the ice maker doesn't do the trick, go ahead and go to the step number four, which that is the one work for me. And I gotta say, I found another video online. I probably link it in the description of this video um, to do this repair. However, I have done it differently and I'm gonna explain to you why in a couple of minutes. This is the three things that I bought. It's a heat element on the left 
and some ground wire on the middle just to put some spacers and the connections that you're gonna use to be able to install the heater on the right. Now, if you wanna find this uh, three things, there's gonna be a link in the description of this video and you can buy all these three things, including um, the silicone. I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a link that way you can find all four things I meant. The heat element, the ground wire to make a, a spacer, the connections and the silicone that way you guys only buy it from one seller and you can order all these three things and i definitely can tell you that this will um, solve your problem if the other steps doesn't work now i know a lot of people are angry with um, samsung because of this um, situation where ice maker getting frost and the back panel getting frost but i realize that the reason why this is happening is because it, the only explanation that i have is that after a while the um the temperature made the back of the um panel where you see it right there it it, it sinks you know it gets deforming after a while due to the temperature which and not supposed to do that but um you you get what i'm saying now over here i'm installing the new heat element what this heat element does is it will defrost any build up ice that is going to form around this area which that is what is hitting the fan the ice that is hitting the fan and then eventually the fan stops and that's when the refrigerators start decreasing. Now, the reason why I'm using this green ground wire is because I want to make a space right there where you see that arrow because there is a solder there between the copper and the aluminum. That is the reason why I'm using this because I don't want the heat element to be touching that solder right there i know a lot of people don't use it but this is the way i do it because i don't want that solder right there between the aluminum and the copper to get weak and then it's going to start leaking freon however like i said i probably link another video in the description of this video where it's you know i got it from this guy uh, which you know basically he shows how He's been fixing this situation for about a year. And as you see, I put uh, the green wire in between the heater and the tubing where the solder is. And then I just use the green wire to secure the rest of it. Now, this green wire that you see in the picture is a little too thick and it's not easy to work with. But uh, the one I'm going to link in the description of this video is going to be um, more flexible that way you don't go um, having a hard time trying to put this spacer on if you want to do it the way I do it now I have done this repair um, a couple times and it's been fine now especially this one in this model it's been about three months I haven't received any calls from the customer and I actually called them and they said their refrigerator is working fine they were very irritated you know because there was more than one company going out there some companies they stopped answering the phone and because they couldn't find out what's wrong with it and two we went back like four times and figured out that this is the solution for this now this is the connection that we're going to use if you want to know how this um, connections work i'm going to go ahead and link another video in the description of this video that way you understand how it works and a better explanation in how to do this connection because um, over here you see me doing it in camera but it's it's a little complicated to understand how it works and um, I probably link another video and uh, using another method to do these connections better and not use this um, this type of wire splicers because uh, sometimes I feel like uh, it might not be uh, doing the connection because there's no way that you can tell if it's connected unless you test it with a electrical tester.
um, now again you can find all this in the description of this video and just order it from there and you'll be able to do this repair just follow the um, the video and if you got if you want more information like I said I'm gonna link um, all these videos that help me and the video on how to use and how to install this wire splicers um, the right way and like I said it's very self-explanatory too um, you can buy this separate too I don't know if I'm gonna put a separate I might put a to buy a separate that way you can get things like maybe from Home Depot and things like that but it would be better for you guys to buy the whole kit that way you don't have to you know make a trip to Home Depot and then order and other things from Amazon and things like that so any information additional I'm gonna keep uploading because I know this is gonna solve the problem for many people they keep have to call in the technician because the uh, refrigerator is making a rattling noise because the fan is hitting ice and then eventually you don't hear the noise but the refrigerator stops cooling and decrease temperature now in your scenario you don't you're not gonna have that phone because like I told you I really don't want you guys to um, do the phone step because I don't think it helps for anything instead now it's in my way and I have to you know clean it up to be able to install my heater so don't don't use the the third step because uh, that foam is not gonna do any good now this is the other splicer and as you see you put one in the uh, one wire through and then the other one in the other hole and then it stops by itself it doesn't go through all the way and then just you know with the pliers just put that metal piece in and that will do the connection I have to make sure that this was working fine and I use my tester but I have to cut one of the wires and like I said that is why I probably gonna upload another video and I'm gonna put it in the description if I find a better way to do this connection and you know for sure that it's gonna work fine um, I'm probably gonna use a, another type of wire connections that can tell you exactly if the wires are connected correctly but um, the videos that I found online, this is what they use and it's working fine. Like I said, the guy said that he's been doing it for about a year and he haven't received any callbacks from the customers. And additional, I just put silicone around it because you know, it gets cold in here and I don't want any humidity, any ice or any water gets in the wiring. And just use the same silicone that you use to seal the ice, ice maker box and which is weatherproof and you should be fine that way you don't have a corroded um, connection in the future now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, panel back in place and again another thing that I want to Go ahead and mention to you guys is that if your panel is still fine and your ice maker is, is fine like if it's the first time this is happening to you don't replace the ice maker don't replace the panel go ahead and do this procedure which is the step number four and that will solve your problem um, I might recommend you to replace the thermistor either way because like I said in some cases that thermistor goes bad and it's a way to check that thermi store for kilo ohms but i never trust it um i do it with the ge's the ge thermi store are more accurate now over here somebody said put it on defrost mode um but uh if the thermostat is off 
is not going to come on. I'm checking temperatures. I'm checking for ohms. And it didn't work for me because it's all different. And if the bottom heat element is not on, the small heat element is not going to be on either. So um, just do the installation, put everything back together, and, you know, give it some time. Remember that the ice take days or weeks to start forming. So you might have to give it about two or three weeks. If you don't hear that noise, if you don't see any ice of the ice maker stops working, that means you did a good repair. Now we're gonna put everything back together because we are done with this repair. It's a two long screws, one for the bottom and one for the top. By the way, guys, if this video helped you in any ways, please give me a thumbs up. That helped me to keep creating contents for everybody in this channel. And as you see right there, I'm just making sure that the panel is sitting in place. Let's put the, a screw cover back in place. <laughs> now we put in the uh, ice maker bucket. Sometimes if it doesn't go in, just put your hand inside and spin the little um, piece of plastic that is inside the shore. I think that's what they call it, the shore, shore. I don't know. You get the idea. Now this is the uh, drawer top panel. It's very self-explanatory, has some female to uh, male, male to female connections. And this should snap in place, just lift it up. After that, just put the drawers, uh, the drawers back in place and put all the racks that you already have removed earlier. Uh, this is another thing that sometimes, well, I did in this video, I just didn't put it in the, in the footage, but I do take pictures to remember how they were, the way I live the racks the same way the customer had him so at this point we're pretty much done again guys it doesn't cost you anything please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i see you on the next video set the temperature and that's it thanks for watching